Hello dear readers and subscribers. Welcome to another video with some practical career advice for artists. And in this video, we will be discussing how to sell your art with your website. Discussing everything you need to know when it comes to having a web shop on your website. The hot topic if you should show your prices on your website. And also sharing with you how all the esteemed art galleries and artists are selling their art online without the use of a web shop. To have a web shop or not to have a web shop? That is the question. Now, before misusing any further Porsche Experian codes, the important thing you need to understand here is that depending on your goals, your strategy should be different as well. For instance, if you are an artist who is looking for established gallery representation, then the answer to this question would be no. Whereas if you are an artist who already has an audience, then yes, having a web shop could be a great idea for you. One can also try to balance between these two almost opposing mindsets when it comes to having a webshop and will expand on this strategy later in this video. Please note that I don't want to push you into any direction. Here at Kai we are especially working towards success in the highest realms of the art world, including gallery representation, but as we have discussed extensively in our video on the different career paths for artists, this choice should be entirely up to you. However, before making that decision, you need to have all the information to make an informed decision. So let's start with discussing the main benefits and drawbacks of having a web shop on your artist website. The main benefit, of course, of having a web shop on your artist website is that when you have traffic on your site and you have an audience on social media or wherever, it is a very efficient way to monetize that audience. Please note that generating that traffic or having an audience is not as easy as it might look. You need up to hundreds of thousands of followers to have any substantial income via your social media or you would have to invest tremendous amounts of time in writing a blog which is also very competitive these days when it comes to the art industry to gain organic traffic or you would have to pay a lot of paid advertising on Instagram and Facebook to generate that traffic. However, if you have an audience and if you have traffic on your website, it is a terrific way to monetize it. And the second advantage here is that you don't have to pay any commission on your sales, whether be it the 50% to the gallery director who invested in a show or the 35% to Saatchi for selling your art via their platform. You keep 100% of the turnover. Another great benefit, especially for the clients here, is that a web shop is incredibly transparent. It shows all the works that are available and it also shows the pricing. So this removes this barrier, this kind of intimidating barrier of having to contact an artist to request the prices because you're afraid that they might be too high or maybe that you won't end up buying anything and then you just wasted their time. Before discussing the drawbacks of having a web shop, here are some very important strategies to have a web shop that actually sells. First and foremost, if you have an online web shop, it is important not to oversaturate your offer. One of the main reasons why online buyers do not proceed to purchase a work of art is because there is too much choice. Oversupply leads to indecision, as they are worried they might be missing out on a work they would like better when browsing through the numerous available artworks. As they can only see the work online, the more real-life pictures you have of the artwork from various angles and in various contexts, for instance, on the wall, from the side, a detail, etc., the more likely they will purchase the piece in question. As the online art collector report by Artsy has shown, most online buyers purchase art to decorate their homes, so you could consider making pictures of your art in an interior. However, as we have discussed in the past on this channel, this is something that is rather frowned upon in the high-end art world, but we'll get to this a little bit later. Next, you must also add a very clear description, not only of the artwork, but also of how the transaction works. Think of the payment options, if there is a refund policy, the shipping cost, and also the shipping time for it arrives at their new home. In addition, to convince people who are in doubt, include positive reviews of verified customers to show your web shop is trustworthy. And finally, to seal the deal, you can convince them by creating a sense of urgency, such as a temporary discount. The selling strategies that I've just discussed when it comes to selling your art on your website are actually very similar to any selling strategies on any online webshop. As a result, a webshop for art does come across a little bit commercial or tacky, 
as it kind of degrades art to being decoration or a commercial goods. Generally speaking, web shops on artist websites are associated with unsuccessful artists who are unable to find gallery representation or to find a place or a venue to exhibit their work and now desperately trying to sell it online. As a result, the number one thing you must realize when considering opening a web shop is that it will reduce your chances for gallery representation at a good level drastically. Appearances in the arts world are very important and powerful as we have discussed earlier on this channel. And by having a web shop, your appearance, your level, the appearance of your level will be perceived as a lot lower, even if your web shop is generating some good sales. There are numerous reasons why galleries don't like artists with web shops. For instance, it enables collectors to go behind the gallery's back and purchase the artwork directly, even when it was the gallery who provided the lead for the sale. Think of a gallery that invests time and money in a solo exhibition of an artist who has a web shop. A collector visits the show, googles the artist and discovers they can buy work from that artist via the web shop instead. By doing so, the gallery director who invested in the exhibition and thus the career of the artist is left behind empty-handed. This is especially the case when the artist offers their art online at half of the price of their art in the gallery. But we'll discuss transparent pricing further in our next chapter. Next, a very important drawback of having an online web shop is the low conversion rate. This is also something that you really need to be aware of. As studies have shown, online businesses working in art and decor have an average conversion rate of 1.5%. And this is actually a rather generous percentage and is only applicable or feasible when offering products at the lower end of the price spectrum, for instance, limited editions or small scale works. This brings us to the next drawback, the price point. As we have mentioned earlier, the main reason why collectors buy art online is to decorate their home. As a result, they are buying in a price category that is based on the decorative value of an artwork. Whereas a collector who is aiming to invest in a promising artist to be a patron and support them or to have a promising artist in their collection, their budget will be a lot higher because they are collecting within the price range of the artistic value of an artwork, which is a lot higher than the decorative value of an artwork, something we have discussed when discussing the value of art. This is also reflected in the data concerning the online sales. The art market report by UBS and Art Basel has shown that 76% of all online sales are below 10K and a whopping 61% of those sales are below 5K. And these numbers once more are actually quite generous because this includes all the online sales of the major art galleries and of the auction houses as well. In reality, for your web shop, these numbers will be a lot lower. As mentioned earlier, one of the benefits was transparency of having a web shop. However, the drawback of this transparency is that this results in a rather impersonal connection or communication with your clients. Everything happens from behind a screen, from a paywall, and in the best case, via an email correspondence. Whereas in reality, collectors are one of the most important contacts within the network of an artist to further their career. And when there is no real contact with your clients, or even more, with your potential clients, who visited the webshop, saw the prices, and bounced away moments later. With those potential buyers, you have no contact at all. Empirical evidence has shown over and over again that collectors can be instrumental context for your art career, not only to have a recurring client and thus recurring income, but also to further your career and open doors in the art world. The thing you need to realize is that it is also beneficial for the collector if you prosper in the art world, because by doing so, their acquisition will increase in value. Therefore, they will vouch with other collectors and other galleries, resulting in new sales and new exhibition opportunities. And with a webshop, it is almost impossible to achieve such a synergetic collaboration with your clients. This brings us to the final drawback of having a webshop, is that it is not a long-term strategy to maintain and that can accumulate over time and multiple your prices as you grow in the art world. But this is something we discussed extensively in our video about artist career paths and the dilemmas of self-representation versus gallery representation. At the end of this video, I will include a link to that particular video because I believe it is most important to watch that one as well, to make an informed decision about this topic about webshops. Pricing in the art world is often a hot topic. If you price them too low, then you're not considered serious or of a high value. If you price them too high, you will never sell anything. So your prices need to be absolutely right. However, as we have discussed with an online webshop, 
your price will be pushed towards the lower end of the spectrum due to the lower conversion rate and also because the audience you'll have the collectors who aim to purchase something online to decorate their home have a lower price point so by doing so not only will you have lower chances for gallery representation because you have a web shop now it will even reduce them further because your prices are too low on their web shop and these prices have no profit margins for the gallery to work with you and on the other hand if you set your prices the right way and in the uh, industry accepted way the market conform pricing model then with web shops you have little to no sales at all because the price point doesn't match with the target audience for web shops there are other reasons as well not to show your prices on your website not only because it is a little bit tacky and it comes across as commercial but also because indiscreet pricing is something not all collectors would like because by doing so the entire world can see how much they paid for their newest acquisition so how can we communicate our prices and maintain a high-end level and still sell art via our website well let's share the strategy that all the art galleries and successful artists are using in the art world The main reason why one would consider opening a webshop is it because you are worried that when someone would be interested in purchasing a work of art, they do not have the opportunity to do so if you don't have a webshop. However, as we have done with our Artwist website tutorial, all the established mid-career or successful emerging artists do not have a webshop on their website either and they are making online sales via their sites. Even more, the art galleries, the selling machines of the art world, do not have any web shops either. In the art world online, we use a catalog with available works to generate sales online via our website. The catalog with available works is arguably one of the most important documents for your art career and you should always have it prepared and up to date. Not only for collectors who are interested, but also for galleries who are interested in working with you or to submit for your application for a residency or grant. However, in those cases, you might omit including your prices. All art galleries and serious artists are using this strategy. And the seasoned collectors are very aware of this. And it is very common for them to request these kinds of catalogs. By doing so, instead of going through all the trouble of setting up a web shop, which is a lot of work, and also risk your chances for gallery representation or to come across as too tacky and too commercial, you can simply add an inquire button below your artworks in your selected works page. Other artists will mention on their about page for further inquiries, please write us at namesurname at gmail.com or even others don't even mention this line and simply make sure their contact information is there. If you are a seasoned collector, you are aware you can request these types of catalogs. However, the most efficient way to do this and to generate the most leads and also the most contact details is by using the button. So the main advantages of this selling strategy is that you maintain a high end profile. Your pricing remains discreet and also flexible, meaning sometimes you can change it, for instance, for some recurring collectors. You'll have a higher conversion rate and most importantly, you can engage directly with a potential client and add their contact information to your central contact list. Think about it. It is common knowledge in marketing that before a person acts on a specific uh, service, product, business or person, they have to see it or encounter it on average seven times before they feel the incentive to act on it, to contact them or to purchase it. Having acquired their contact deals and with their permission, you can now work towards those seven encounters and monetize the potential client in the foreseeable future. There are also unwritten rules in the art world of how a catalog should look. As with all documents for artists, the design must be very simple, clean and professional. Create a simple PDF file via Word or Pages, A4 in size, black or dark grey font on a white backdrop, have a simple cover page, resume and biography page that also need to be set up following the unwritten rules of the art world, followed by your available works organized chronologically in descending order, starting with the most recent ones and going back in time as we scroll through the pages. One page per artwork and make sure to include the metadata of the artwork encompassing the title, year, medium and dimensions. Now to avoid making any mistakes here, we have provided a Kai template on our platform. This is a pre-designed catalog in a Word document that you can simply enter your information and your artworks while remaining in line with the unwritten rules of the art world and having the archetypical structure for catalogs with available work. Feel free to have a look at this template on our platform and I'll include a link to it in the description below. To conclude, what if you want to combine both strategies and play both games? For instance, 
you have a very large following on social media. However, you're also looking for established gallery representation. The most important thing here is to separate your shop, your store, with your selected workspace, with your portfolio. Use a separate tab or even a separate website and make sure to also present different pieces. For instance, showing your unique pieces in your portfolio in your selected works without prices with an inquire button below the artworks and on a separate tab in your store having limited edition sprints with the price. Different items, a different page and a different approach. Also in the store, try to play it cool and do not over commercialize it. So stay clear of uh, using discounts, mockups in interiors or reviews by clients. In the end, it is crucial to maintain a high profile and to remain professional with your website. And if you want to learn more about professional artist websites, make sure to read our article or watch our video on how to set up your artist website following the industry approved archetypical structure next. For more career advice, you can also consult our platform at contemporaryartissue.com. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're still in doubt which career path is suitable for you, I would strongly advise you to watch our video discussing self-representation versus gallery representation next. Support us on Patreon and please consider subscribing to stay posted for more contemporary art. Bye.